can you dance to it? Hmm. Oh, hi, and welcome to another episode of LPN Laundry. If this is your first time, here's how it works. I play one side of an unusual record. We talked about it a little bit before, maybe a little bit during, and over the course of it, I'll fold some laundry. It's not really about the laundry, but I have been told that it is oddly compelling. This week, well, we are still, we're still staying at home here, right? So many of us are just either working from home or maybe, maybe laid off. Some people are essential workers and thank you for risking your health and safety uh, for the rest of us. Uh, but no matter what, a lot of us have more time on our hands, right? There isn't much that you can do out there. Can't go to the movies, can't go to a comedy club, can't go to a bar, all kinds of things that you can't do, so you're stuck at home. How are you using that time? Are you using that time productively? Are you doing something like improving your vocabulary in speech? <laughs> yeah, this week it's going to be Hear How, it's the Hear How series, by the way, Hear How to Improve Your Vocabulary and Speech with Professor Richard Norman, Speech Department, Columbia University. He teaches the correct pronunciation and meaning of many difficult words used in everyday conversation. This is arguably, oh, exactly, the first non-musical selection we've done on LPN Laundry, uh, and uh, we'll see how that plays out. Who knows? You know, in the middle of the last century, you know, things weren't all about conformity and casual racism. No, no. People genuinely were using things like records to improve themselves. And this is uh, the Carlton Hear How series. It's part of a series. Other possible options that you could have are things like hear how to converse, uh, converse in French, uh, uh, hear how to skin dive. Uh, Lloyd Bridges <laughs> teaches that one. Uh, hear how to look your loveliest. Hear how to improve your etiquette. Hear how to improve, achieve sexual harmony in marriage. Actual, actual album. Hear how to achieve sexual harmony in marriage. I have to wonder if maybe that one was wrapped in a plain brown wrapper. Am I right? Anyway, there is, of course, why wouldn't there be a persuasive essay to tell us a little bit more about what to expect from this album, right? Now, uh, I've gone through this a few times. I used to do voiceover. I was never great at it. I have pipes. I never had the chops. So I'm probably going to fumble. I may even mispronounce uh, a word here or there. It is not deliberate. <clears throat> If you've ever been dissatisfied with your own speech or wanted to increase your vocabulary, this record is designed for you. On it, you'll have a private speech lesson from one of the most distinguished speech teachers in the country, Professor Richard Norman of the Speech Department of Barnard College, Columbia University. Professor Norman will help, with your, will help you with your speech and vocabula vocabulary at one and the same time. There are 150 words he analyzes here, shows you how to pronounce them, discusses their meaning and uses in simple sentences. Listen to the record a few times and your vocabulary will improve. You'll use words you've never used before and use them and pronounce them correctly. Many of these words you'll be familiar with, but even these you may be mispronouncing and or misusing. Professor Norman has carefully chosen his list of 150 to represent some of the words most frequently mispronounced or mis misused. They're not trick words either, but words which are common and encountered almost every, every day. So here's a perfect opportunity to in increase your vocabulary and improve your speech with an authority as your teacher. Sounds promising. Are you ready to improve yourself? I am. Determining the pronunciation of an English word is not always very easy. 
The reason for the difficulty is a lack of what is called phonetic spelling in English. In other words, one can't always tell from the way a word is spelled how it will be pronounced. On this record, we're going to indicate to you some of the words frequently mispronounced, 150 of these words to be exact. We realize that going over lists of words will not in itself improve pronunciation. The words should be used in actual sentences. Therefore, we suggest that you follow this procedure. I'll pronounce the word, spell it, give an indication of the meaning of the word where this seems to be needed, and then use it in the sentence. You write out each word, listen to my pronunciation of it, and to the sentence in which it's used, and then repeat the sentence after me. There will be space left on the record for you to repeat each sentence. Some of these words will offer no problem to you. However, those which do should be checked on your list and gone over a second and a third time if necessary. Please remember to use the words in sentences. Don't be content merely to read lists of words. Are you ready now? Pencil and paper within reach. Here we go. First we have the word abyss. A-B-Y-S-S, -S, meaning a deep gulf. Say after me, please. The truck went off the road and fell into the abyss. The truck went off the road and fell into the abyss. Be careful to put the accent in the right place in this next word. Admirable. A-D-M-I-R-A-B-L-E. Repeat after me. She spoke with admirable restraint. She spoke with admirable restraint. Aegis, A-E-G-I-S, means protection or sponsorship. Say, the company operated under royal aegis. The company operated under royal aegis. Next word, alias, A-L-I-A-S, which, as you know, usually refers to an assumed name. The sentence for practice use is, the criminal had an alias. The criminal had an alias. Notice that the L is not pronounced in Amond, A-L-M-O-N-D. Say after me, a box of almonds lay on the table. A box of almonds lay on the table. Avoid substituting one sound for another in the word analogous. A-N-A-L-O-G-O-U-S, meaning can be compared to. Say after me, the situation is analogous to an earlier one. The situation is analogous to an earlier one. Here's a pair of words frequently confused in pronunciation. Anecdote, A-N-E-C-D-O-T-E, -E, and antidote, a-N-T-I-D-O-T-E. An anecdote is a short account of an incident. Repeat after me, please. The speaker told an amusing anecdote. The speaker told an amusing anecdote. An antidote is a remedy given to counteract the effect of poison. Here's the practice sentence. The doctor gave him an antidote for the snake bite. The doctor gave him an, an uh, antidote for the snake bite. Well, here's a tongue twister. Anesthetist. A-N-E-S-T-H-E-T-I-S-T. -E -E the practice sentence will give you the meaning. The anesthetist gave the patient an anesthetic. The anesthetist gave the patient an anesthetic. Here are two words which are often mispronounced because there is an omission of a sound. The Arctic, A-R-C-T-I-C, refers, of course, to the region around the North Pole. Antarctic, A-N-T-A-R-C-T-I-C, -C, refers to the region around the South Pole. Be sure to sound the k sound in both words. Say after me first, polar bears are found in the Arctic. Polar bears are found in the Arctic. And now, Admiral Byrd explored the Antarctic. Admiral Byrd explored the Antarctic. 
Watch also that you get all the sounds in the word asterisk. A-S-T-E-R-I-S-K. Say, the asterisk on the page indicated a special reference. The asterisk on, a pa on the page indicated a special reference. Don't bother to sound the TH sound in asthma, spelled A-S-T-H-M-A. -A. Here's the practice sentence. He suffered extremely from asthma. He suffered extremely from asthma. There are only three syllables in athletic. A-T-H-L-E-T-I-C. As in the sentence, you should repeat after me. He was very athletic. He was very athletic. Short Here's a word you've probably seen in print many times but may have been afraid to pronounce it. In spite of its French appearance, it's pronounced in the English way. The word is avoirdupois. A-V-O-I-R-D-U-P-O-I-S. And colloquially, it means simply wait. Repeat after me. Her avoirdupois was considerable. Her avoirdupois was considerable. The word awry, A-W-R-Y, means wrong or askew. Say, his scheme went awry. His scheme went awry. Be sure you get the correct vowel sound in bad, B-A-D-E, the past tense of bid. Say after me, the hostess bade her guests a warm welcome. The hostess get bade her guests a warm welcome. An everyday word often mispronounced is Chamon. because, B-E-C-A-U-S-E. -E. Not because or because, but because. Huh. Say, I'm going because I want to. I'm going because I want to. Blatant. Huh is a word meaning offensive or noisy, coarse. It is spelled B-L-A-T-A-N-T. -T. Say, his blatant manner offended her. His blatant manner offended her. Although the next word is spelled B-R-E-E-C-H-E-S, it is pronounced breeches. Say after me, he wore riding breeches for the fox hunt. He wore riding breeches for the fox hunt. <laughs> Our next word is berry. B-U-R-Y. Berry. Say after me, they will bury the treasure in the sand. They will bury the treasure in the sand. Another of the oh, words with an breeches. L in its spelling, which is not pronounced, is calm. C-A-L-M. Here's the practiced sentence. Say it as I do now. He was very calm about it. He was very calm about it. Many people confuse the sounds in the words Calvary, C-A-L-V-A-R-Y, the site of Christ's death, and Cavalry, C-A-V-A-L-R-Y, troops on horseback. Here are sentences illustrating their use. Say each one after me. Christ died on Calvary. Christ died on Calvary. And he was in the cavalry in the First World War. He was in the cavalry in the First World War. Chaise long is a French term which has been somewhat Americanized in pronunciation, but hasn't taken out final citizenship papers. The first word is pronounced chaise. C-H-A-I-S-E, and means, of course, chair. And the second word, long, L-O-N-G-U-E, means, of course, long. It's a sort of reclining chair, this chaise long. Say after me, she bought a chaise long for the new apartment. She bought a, ch a chaise long for the new apartment. Chameleon is a word for a small lizard. It is also used to refer to a person who is inconsistent, <clears throat> changing with the wind. It is spelled C-H-A-M-E-L-E-O-N. Here's the practice sentence. The chameleon changes color frequently. The chameleon changes color frequently. The word cherub is spelled C-H-E-R-U-B. 
You've seen pictures of them, I know. <laughs> a kind of Poor celestial kid. creature looking like a very young child. Say, he looked as innocent as a cherub. He looked as innocent as a cherub. Chimera, C-H-I-M-E-R-A, is a fancy sort of word referring to a horrible creature of the imagination. Also, sure. Say, the fear pursued him like a chimera. The fear pursued him like a chimera. Two words frequently confused in meaning are chiropodist <clears throat> and chiropractor. A chiropodist treats minor foot ailments. Hmm. And the word is spelled C-H-I-R-O-P-O-D-I-S-T. An appropriate practice sentence for this word is, she went to a chiropodist about her foot trouble. She went to a chiropodist about her foot trouble. A chiropractor, C-H-I-R-O-P-R-A-C-T-O-R, is one who treats sore backs, among other things. Right. Repeat the sentence, yes, the chiropractor worked on his spinal column. The chiropractor <coughs> practor worked on his spiral column. The word spinal clientele, column. as you know, <laughs> refers to customers or patients. <coughs> it is spelled C-L-I-E-N-T-E-L-E. -E -E. Here's the practice sentence. He had an excellent clientele. He had an excellent clientele. Another pair of words often confused is climatic, C-L-I-M-A-T-I-C, and climactic, C-L-I-M-A-C-T-I-C. The first of them, climatic, refers, of course, to the climate. Say after me, climatic conditions were not favorable for the fruit crop. Climatic conditions were not favorable for the fruit crop. Climactic refers to a climax. Say, the climactic moment of the play came at the end of the second act. The climactic moment of the play came at the second act. <laughs> well, came when? Coiffure, C-O-I-F-F-U-R-E, is a word that is sometimes mispronounced. As you probably know, it refers to a style of arranging the hair. Say after me, her coiffure gave her an air of elegance. Her coiffure gave her an air of elegance. Now the word column, C-O-L-U-M-N. -N. Note that the final N is not pronounced. Say now, he writes a column for the newspaper. He writes a column for the newspaper. Comely, C-O-M-E-L-Y, is a word meaning pleasing in appearance. Say, the comely girl attracted great attention. The comely girl uh, attracted great attention? Controller, spelled C-O-M-P-T-R-O-L-L-E-R, -L -L -E means the same thing and has the same pronunciation as controller, spelled C-O-N-T-R-O-L-L-E-R. -L -L -E Here's the practice sentence for it. The controller checked his expenditures. The controller checked his expenditures. A condolence, C-O-N-D-O-L-E-N-C-E, -E, is an expression of sympathy. The word is stressed right on back. the second syllable, condolence. Say, I sent him a note of condolence. A consul, C-O-N-S-U-L, is an agent appointed to administrative duties in a foreign country. Here's a sentence illustrating the word's use. The American consul is an important official in large European cities. Contrast consul, C-O-N-S-U-L, with counsel, C-O-U-N-S-E-L, meaning advice. Note the difference in the pronunciation of the first vowels. Say, he was given counsel on his financial affairs. By the way, C-O-U-N-C-I-L, meaning assembly, is pronounced the same way as counsel, meaning advice. Say after me, the town council met on Thursday. Watch consummate when used as an adjective. It is consummate, 
C-O-N-S-U-M-M-A-T-E, meaning perfect. Try after me. She was a consummate actress. She was a consummate actress. And core, C-O-R-P-S, as in the sanitation core, the signal core, and so forth, is frequently mispronounced. The word is still pronounced in the French way, that is, without sounding the P or the S. Say, the Corps of Engineers repaired the bridge. The Corps of Engineers repaired the bridge. Culinary refers to the kitchen and is spelled C-U-L-I-N-A-R-Y. Say after me, a good sauce is a culinary achievement. A good sauce is a culinary achievement. A dais, D-A-I-S, is a raised platform. It may be pronounced as dais or dais. Say this, he mounted the dais with vigorous stride. He mounted the dais with vigorous stride. The preferred pronunciation of D-E-F-I-C-I-T in American English is deficit. Say, there was a deficit in his accounts of several thousand dollars. There was a deficit in his accounts of several thousand dollars. Avoid an extra sound in disastrous. Notice its spelling, D-I-S-A-S-T-R-O-U-S. She had a disastrous experience. She had a disastrous experience. An echelon is a level of command. It is spelled E-C-H-E-L-O-N. Repeat after me. The officer belonged to a high echelon. The officer belonged to a high echelon. In the word efficacy, E-F-F-I-C-A-C-Y, the stress is on the first syllable. Efficacy means capacity for producing effects. Here's our sentence. She doubted the efficacy of the plan. She doubted the efficacy of the plan. Don't put an extra sound in electoral. E-L-E-C-T-O-R-A-L. Say, the votes of the Electoral College elect a president. The votes of the Electoral College elect a er, president. E-R-R <coughs> is a little word which is frequently confused in pronunciation with error. Notice that the pronunciation of it is er. er. And for the practice sentence we'll use... Who guessed it, the famous line by Alexander Pope, to err is human, to forgive divine. To err is human, to forgive divine. To eschew is to shun or avoid. <clears throat> it is spelled E-S-C-H-E-W. The practice sentence is, the man was asked to eschew his former associates. I, I... Et cetera, E-T... C-E-T-E-R-A is a useful Latin phrase which is usually abbreviated to E-T-C, period. Say after me, etc. refers to unspecified persons or things. Etc. refers to unspecified persons or things. It's kind of a cheat. Facade is spelled F-A-C-A-D-E. There's a cedilla or comma put under the C and refers to the principal face of a building. It also has a figurative meaning, indicating the outer aspect of someone or something. Say, the new office building has an interesting facade. The new office building has an interesting facade. Preferred pronunciation for the second month of the year is February. F-E-B-R-U-A-R-Y. Notice the two R's in the spelling. F-E-B-R-U-A-R-Y. Say after me... February is often a month of sleet and snow. February is often a month of sleet and snow. February. Most sailors will tell you that the preferred pronunciation for the term referring to the forward part of a merchant ship is foxo. The spelling doesn't bear much resemblance to the pronunciation. F-O-R-E-C-A-S-T-L-E. -E. Say after me, the sailors assembled on the foxo. The sailors assembled on the forecastle in everyday work. The next word is formidable. <clears throat> F-O-R-M-I-D-I-B-L-E, meaning of alarming strength. Say, 
The cavalry was once a formidable force in warfare. The cavalry was once a formidable force in warfare. Gauge, <coughs> G-A-U-G-E, is a tricky word because of its spelling. Say after me, he couldn't gauge the distance between the two cars. He couldn't gauge the distance between the two cars. A gimlet is a small mm. tool for boring holes. Gimlet, G-I-M-L-E-T, is also used in a figurative sense. To pierce is with a gimlet. Say after me, the Gimlet-Eyed General reviewed the troops. The Gimlet-Eyed General reviewed, reviewed the troops a as gourmet, he on his gimlet. G-O-U-R-M-E-T, is a connoisseur of food. And here's a sentence with the word in it. Her culinary achievement was fit for any gourmet. Her culinary achievement was fit for any gourmet. Way to try the to word this up. grandeur, G-R-A-N-D-E-U-R, -E indicates imposing greatness. Say, the grandeur of the ceremony was overwhelming. The grandeur of the ceremony was overwhelming. Grievous, G-R-I-E-V-O-U-S, means atrocious or flagrant. Avoid using one too many sounds in pronouncing it. Say, it was a grievous offense. It was a grievous offense. General the next word is grocery, G-R-O-C-E-R-Y. Here's the sentence to repeat. She goes to the grocery on Saturday. She goes to the grocery on Saturday. Guarantee, G-U-A-R-A-N-T-E-E, -E, is a word to be watched. Say, there was a year's guarantee on the equipment. There was a year's guarantee on the equipment. A harbinger, H-A-R-B-I-N-G-E-R, -E is a messenger or herald. Say after me, the robin is usually called the harbinger of spring. The robin is usually called the harbinger of spring. H-E-I-G-H-T is pronounced only as height. Only. Height. Note that the G-H in the word does not mean anything as far as the pronunciation of the word is concerned. Pronunciation. Say after me, his height was over six feet. His height was over six feet. Here's another of those G-H words. Watch out for it. Hiccup, the usual spelling of which is H-I-C-C-O-U-G-H, is pronounced only as hiccup. Sometimes the spelling is H-I-C-C-U-P. <laughs> say after me, some people say that a slap on the back will cure hiccups. Some people say that a slap on the back will cure hiccups. An everyday sort of word is hundred. H-U-N-D-R-E-D. -E Try to avoid the substandard hundred. Repeat after me, please. He practiced the exercise a hundred times. He practiced the exercise a hundred times. Oh, okay, and that's it for side for side one. Isn't that interesting? Uh, there were there were some words that were surprises, right? I know there certainly were for me. I get the feeling that uh, some of these pronunciations have uh, perhaps gone the way of the chimera. No, that's not the chimera. Is a fictional mythical speculative thing i genuinely don't uh i genuinely don't know but how interesting that was and yet it it didn't appear to make a lot of those pronunciations stick did it um pronounce that, that i'm not crazy right that's wrong I don't know. Anyway, thank you as always for joining me. Uh, if you uh, enjoyed this, please do the usual like, subscribe, share, and so forth. Sharing is caring, don't forget. Uh, if you would like to kind of connect on Facebook, well, I've got a page for that. Facebook.com slash LP Laundry. No and in there or ampersand. It is Facebook.com slash LP Laundry. Uh, if you would like to find an easy uh, archive of every episode that's been up uploaded to YouTube and uh, pictures of the album covers front and back, you can go to uh, mattfugate.blogspot.com. That's right, mattfugate.blogspot.com. Otherwise, take care of yourselves, 
stay at home, wash your hands, and watch your pronunciation.